Transport Minister Dipur Peters is testifying at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry today. Peters is giving evidence about the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, the agency's former board chair Popo Molefe and former head of the legal division Martha Ngoya also expected to take the stand. Well, Barry Bateman, we've been following today's proceedings. Let's find out from him what's been happening there. Barry, uh, good morning. And uh, yeah, for those of us who missed uh, what uh, Dipur Peters has had to say about the time that she was a Minister of Transport that goes all the way back to, to 2013 and the name Lucky Montana coming up quite often. So just give us a brief idea of what's happened so far this morning. Yeah, good morning, Yuveka. Well, the focus has been on a meeting um, in August 2017, which was attended by Peters, uh, the former board chair, Popo Molefe, as well as former minister, uh, Jeff Khadebe, and uh, Lucky Montana himself, and it was convened by former president Jacob Zuma. Now, Popo Molefe went into some detail in his evidence about what this meeting entailed. And what he said, and this is the crux of the issue and the concern that he had raised, is that he got the impression that the former president had called this meeting um, in order to intervene in board matters, in that he wanted Lucky Montana to return as group chief executive. Now, at this time when this meeting was called, Montana had tendered his resignation and the resignation was accepted by the board. And it was a clear attempt, according to Molefe, to have this decision reversed or to it, for it to be reviewed. Now, Peters has said she did not get this impression at all. It was rather about the public spats that were happening between Molefe and Montana that they wanted to have this quelled and settled. But it went a little bit further, Vassoni going to the evidence of uh, uh, Popo Molefe, uh, where he specifically referred to something that former President Jacob Zuma had said at this meeting. And he said that Lucky Motano was very knowledgeable in rail matters and that for him to leave Prasa would be a loss to the country. Therefore, they should settle their differences and they should review this decision and Motana should come back. Mm. That particular aspect, and this is where we ended off a short mm. few minutes ago, Peters cannot remember. Mm. Okay, well, uh, Barry, give us some idea of the question she's had to answer uh, with regard to her responsibility for what was happening at the time or how much she had to do or how much oversight she had uh, at the time that she was transport minister and this was all happening. Well, it wasn't so much questions that were put to her. She was going to be led through her affidavit, but she opted instead to give us an opening statement, if you will. And she was talking about how important transport, the transport portfolio is to South Africa, um, how there are 12 entities that fall under transport, and they all play their very specific role. But PRASA itself was a very important one if you're going to be talking about moving the nation, uh, using trains for people to get to and from work, its role in transporting um, uh, the various cargo around the country. But it was very very interesting aspect in her evidence that she started volunteering denials to allegations which had not even been put to her. For example, she denied that she had played any role in state capture. She also denied that she had influenced any tenders uh, or, or played any role in uh, influencing people to issue tenders, saying, this is not my culture or style of work. Vassoni was quick to put it to her that these allegations hadn't been put to her. Certainly curious, someone denying something that they haven't mm. been accused of. Mm. And uh, to just take us back, uh, I suppose, for, for, for many of us who haven't been sort of keeping track of if, like you say, they, she has been implicated in any way in the past, uh, De, De Poor Peters, in her time. Has the name come up uh, with any of the anything to have, having to do with, the, with Prasa Berry over the past couple of years? One of the aspects that we're going to be dealing with later is the decision for the appointment. There's four aspects that we're going to be dealing with in her evidence today. The one is this meeting with former President Jacob Zuma. The others will be the appointment of uh, former Chief Executive Collins at Swallow. We understand the allegation that this was irregular. Um, and the decision, if you go back to the time, there was a lot of... Uh, the, the relationship between board chair Popo Malefe and Dipur Peters wasn't the best at the time. Um, and it was Dipur Peters who decided to dissolve the board of Prasa. Now, that's one of the serious allegations that are against her, because we know that that decision uh, by Peters was ultimately reversed by the High Court in Pretoria, found that it was unlawful and irregular. So that is one of the main aspects or the four aspects that we'll be getting into today. All right, should be another interesting, a uh, couple of interesting hours ahead there at State Capture. They'll be back uh, shortly in about five or ten minutes, we understand. Well, let's